So for people who are in the orchestral audition world, I mean, that's like, that's the moment you, you dream of, right? You know, that you've actually, you've gone through the process and that, that, you know. Keep in mind, this is not my first audition. The year before, I tried to take North Carolina. The year before to the day, on St. Patrick's Day, okay. St. Patrick's Day weekend, I didn't get invited. Okay. My teacher told me to crash it. Right. So I prepped all that rep, very strange, didn't get it. Okay. So in between that and then Fort Worth, I took Detroit. Right. And then I took Navy. I think what we come to expect by hearing other other people tell their stories is that you take 20, 30, 40 auditions, you know, before you either get... Professional auditions. Yeah. But so hopefully get... before all that, you still have 20 auditions right. under your belt live. I would still count grad school as a preparatory experience as long as it's live. If it's not live, not the same. So, and I think you had also mentioned to me that prior to winning this job, so you had taken a couple of auditions, but you hadn't, you hadn't advanced. I had never advanced. So you had, you went from taking a handful of professional auditions, and I haven't made it out of the pre-runs, to... To winning. Yeah. Um, which is kind of crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. Like, did you feel like, in looking back, like, oh, well, actually, no, I was super ready, and... The two big things were the mental prep yeah. that John was helping me do, and then playing for other perspectives. Right. I know, for example, I played for Jeff Turner, principal of base of Pittsburgh, okay. and I played Porgy the Train. And for most percussionists, they wanted really smooth accents. And he was like, I want clear accents. Okay. I found out in the semis, only two people had accents, and I was one of them. They okay. liked that. They okay. were like, why wouldn't you? Right. The rest of the committee, you're not playing for percussionists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're still playing for four other people, uh, usually, right. that aren't. So, and the conductor was in our semis. Okay. He was there. Okay. Who else was on the committee? Um, so the committee was Seth ran the audition, the right. timpanist here. Deborah Mashburn and Brad Wagner, who are also people in the symphony here. Right. And then the principal tuba, principal trumpet at the time, he was acting principal for the year. Acting principal horn, I believe, and trombone. Okay. Back up just, just a little bit. Kind of getting you to this place in life. So you did your undergrad at the University of Maryland. I did. Um, you got a music ed degree there. Got a music ed degree. Now there's a lineage of percussion in your family, so your dad is principal percussionist at Baltimore Symphony. Yeah, I guess my question is, did you know, when you were an undergrad, did you did you think like, this is what I want to do? My dad will hate me saying this. <laughs> I have a distinct memory. January 2009, he, he played Brahms 1, and I was like, this is my junior year. I was like, this is the stupidest thing. This <laughs> right. is so boring. Yeah. And then I went to Brevard, and that changed everything. So, but why did you go to Brevard? Because if you were in kind of that mindset of like... Because my friends went okay. straight up. All right. But studying with Chip Ross changed a lot. Okay. Just the way you saw Just that... Just appreciating music, the passion for it. And okay. I played in an orchestra that was better than where I was. So at that point then, maybe things started clicking mentally of like, oh, maybe this is the path I want. I yeah, because I almost dropped out of music my sophomore year. Okay. But yeah, I already knew at this point I did not want to do music ed. Right. But I had to if I went to school. Okay. My dad was music ed. <laughs> so like he sort of insisted you need Yeah, at the time. Okay. Looking back, I would say it's kind of dumb to have a plan B. Yeah. If this is what you want to do and you're pretty pretty sure, do you it. just do it. So you finish your, your undergraduate degree. And then I didn't get into grad school for two years. Okay, so... Which um, is not normal. And you auditioned for a number of different places? Eighteen schools in those three years. Okay. So a lot of them twice. I'm pretty sure NEC the second year had a pre-screen because of me my first year. <laughs> okay. It was so bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And then from that I definitely learned a lot. Okay. I appreciate a lesson more. I only took eight lessons in those two years. So two two years of not getting in and then a, and then a third but, year of... But in between that time, I got into NRO, and I was the only person who got into NRO that year who was not coming from school or going to school. Right. So that was probably a, a good confidence boost, I guess. It was definitely a confidence boost. I mean, I remember going to NRO, and I was like, I don't belong here. But you went, and you did it. And I went, and I learned a lot. Right. It's a lot of rep. Right. And that's why, to me, festivals are a big deal. Okay. It's a lot of experience. You can't fake experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then eventually though... So a reason a lot I struggled with grad school auditions, I had a shaking problem. And I openly say I took Beta Blockers my third year. So the first two years you didn't? Nope. And did you do that on principle? Like, I'm not gonna... Um, a lot of people in my family were very, very opposed. But eventually I was like, I gotta try everything, I gotta <laughs> try. <laughs> right, right, right. And then I got into everywhere. <laughs> because that basically solved the problem. It helped a lot. Yeah, yeah. I only barely dabbled in, in the orchestral uh, audition world. So I, I, at some point, had a minor shaking problem. Um, but I was really just more curious about beta blockers than anything else. I, 
does it actually do anything? And I remember I, I, I got some from Family Doctor. And I guess different people respond to them in different ways. I, I think yeah, for me, I've it actually people, didn't do... For some people, it doesn't do anything. Yeah. For some people, taking 10 milligrams, they feel like out of it. For me, making sure I take it early enough, because if I took it an hour before, I, was, I still should have audition with Okay. Okay. And that's pretty rare, Okay. but I didn't take it early enough. The timing... 90 and... minutes minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I take a way higher dose than most people. Okay. <laughs> okay. A lot of my friends take 5 milligrams. Right. I take 40. 40. And that, that gets you to the place you need to yeah, be. Yeah, I'm very anxious. Okay. And okay. So, okay. But I don't shake. Has that changed at all? Like if you, next season, let's say opening concert is Scheherazade, will you think like, uh, I might. My second month here I had played Bolero. Okay. I did take beta blockers okay. for okay. it. I didn't have tenure yet. I was yeah, like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. week six. <laughs> right. this I'm going to do this. It's got to be good. Yeah. yeah. Um, just to wrap it back around then to... You eventually you get into Duquesne, you go to Duquesne. And then Duquesne. You're studying I, with the Pittsburgh guys. My entire first semester was technical. My first lesson with Soroka, it was doing doubles. I'm just going ticket and watching the bead, learning how to practice. And then just working on snare drum roll was the entire focus of my first year. Because I already knew a lot of rep. Yeah, yeah. And I'm still like working on rep, but the bulk of my practice was that. And then at Duquesne, everyone plays xylophone. There's no offset of your mallets. Right. Your mallets are always together, even when, no matter what. Right. And just a little bit of that, that took like a week. So like philosophically, uh, other than Ed, I don't, I don't know the Pittsburgh guys, but from what I hear or understand, I guess like they're like, they're like the Pittsburgh way, like, the, like there's like a way and they feel very strongly about, no, no, okay. not in their teaching. So pretty much here's how I view my education at Duquesne. I learned from John how to mentally be prepared. Right. He's the best teacher I could ever imagine for a very easy technical thing. You have a seven-year-old, you go to Soroka. But you treat yourself that way in the beginning. You want to get strong hands, you study with John. And then you study with Chris for music. So each one has a strength. Okay. To me, just the having a lot of the teachers who are all really strong, but seeing them play at least twice a month right. is huge. Right. Biggest thing for me, as a, my personality, is I question everything. So I'll have a lesson with Ed, and he's going to tell me things, and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. I don't hear this. Right. And, and they were all... I take nothing as well. And they're, but they're open to that. They're responsive and... I don't care. <laughs> right. That's not relevant. <laughs> right, I'm right. open to right, it. Right, right. For me, it's about my education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, whether they're not open to it or not, I'm going to try it. I'm going right. to experiment with it. And I'm going to experiment with something else. So, you're finishing your second season here. And, I, you know, I don't, I don't know this, but I, judging on when your dad started playing with the Baltimore Symphony, he's probably about, what, 40 years in. Maybe he maybe he retires soon. If his job has timpani, I won't take it. Okay. <laughs> He's the assistant timpanist. As you look the next five or ten years, are you someone who's like, you know what, I have a full-time gig, I like it, things are great, or do you feel like, no, I need to keep, in order for me to be sort of at the top of my game, I need to keep... Yeah, even if you want to, like, I'm definitely happy here. Yeah. I hope I'm not here forever. Just because we only play 10 classical weeks, I would like to play a lot more. But just from an audition standpoint, I think it's important for me to keep taking auditions to stay in shape. Right. Okay, and then last question. So you're a transplant to Texas. Yes. Um, and you've been here now a little bit of time. So um, one thing you've, you've come to love about Texas and one thing that you have either come to hate or you anticipated hating it and, and you're like, yeah, I totally, I totally hate this. July and August is miserable. Right. Okay. It's just miserable. <laughs> I do my best. I've never been here in July and I do my best to make sure that's true outside after July 4th. Okay, so, I you, like, so that, that's what you hate. So Fort Worth and Dallas are the opposite of what I like and don't like. Okay. My favorite thing about Fort Worth, easy to park anywhere. Coming okay. from DC, right. staying in Maryland, I never wanted to drive there. I like DC, I don't want to have a car in it. Okay. Here, that's not really a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the nice thing. But I like Fort Worth. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Well, it's been fun uh, playing this week. Have a good summer. Enjoy leaving during the hot season. Yeah. Maybe we'll do it again sometime. All right. Cool.